welcome to the Sun Prayer United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us for worship online on this fourth weekend in Advent. We are glad that you have joined us. My name is Lisa Wink, and I'm on staff here at Sun Prayer United Methodist Church. Our Advent theme this year is Preparing with Gratitude. This week of Advent is the week of joy, and so this week our worship theme is Preparing with Gratitude for Joy. Whether you are a member or a friend of this faith community, or if you are visiting worship online today, we welcome you and are glad that you have joined us. If this is your first time worshiping with Sun Prayer United Methodist Church, welcome. We want to let you know that we extend a wide welcome as we worship, grow in our faith, care for others, serve God in our communities. We want to invite you to get ready for worship. Please know that wherever you are, your space becomes a sanctuary for worship. We want this to be a worshipful experience for you, so if you have a candle or an Advent wreath or an Advent candle display, we invite you to get that ready to light during our Advent candle series. If you have your Bible or a Bible app on your electronic device, we invite you to have that ready to follow along with the scriptures in worship. We are grateful to share Advent worship with you and appreciate knowing that you are with us. So please take a moment to register your attendance on our church website where you clicked into worship. If you're visiting with us online, we also want to know that you've joined us. So please take a moment as well and register your attendance. And now, wherever we are, let us begin our Advent worship together in gratitude and joy. Welcome to worship. My name is Jenny Arneson, and I serve as the lead pastor here at the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. And as we begin our worship on this last weekend of the Advent season, we pour water into our baptismal font. And as the water is poured out, we are reminded that the gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy are all part of our experience of baptism. And those same gifts carry with us into our daily lives because of our baptism. May we remember our baptism and be thankful. And now may the joy of Emmanuel, God with us, be with us wherever we are gathered for worship this day. It is good to worship together. gather as people of joy who celebrate God's coming to us in Jesus Christ. This is the news of great joy. We live with confidence that God is with us. We serve in the trust that God will enrich our generosity. As we abide in God, our words and deeds reflect the joy of God's Spirit. Isaiah 55 verses 12 through 13. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all of the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that you shall not that shall not be cut off. We 
We light this candle to give witness to the joy of God's presence. This joy is deep and strong and life-giving. It nurtures the soul and lifts the spirit. May joy be seen and heard and spoken from east to west and north to south. Let us pray. As Christmas draws near, O oh God, we can see and feel the joy of Advent. We are a joyful people who await your coming. Multiply this gift among us so that those who struggle are sustained. May the songs we sing and the life we live witness to the world of your glorious grace. Amen. 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 Today we light our Advent candle of joy. Hey everyone, it's Director of Christian Education, Amanda Hinthorne. I want to show you one of the really, really cool traditions we have in our home during the Christmas season. Each year in our bucket of Christmas books, we pull out our Advent coloring book. And I set it on our little TV tray in our family room with some markers and crayons and colored pencils. and. As we move through the wings of Advent, we pick up coloring all of the pages. Sometimes we take turns, sometimes one person works on their own. Each day there's a little story that goes with it. But I wanna show you what happens. At the beginning of the Advent season, we are so excited to see this book that the pages are quickly filled with colors and Pretty soon on some of these pages, we'll be out of space to color when we begin the Advent season. But as we go through the book, you begin to notice less colors on the page. See, the Henthorns, they lose steam. This fun, exciting project that began four weeks ago suddenly doesn't draw our attention. And so some of the pages, like the end of last week, are completely blank. And just so you know, we've been working on this coloring book for three or four years. You know, I was thinking about how that happens to us during these weeks leading up to Christmas. At the beginning of the Advent season, we're excited and full of joy. But as we patiently wait through the season, we can lose steam and suddenly, well, the joy isn't there for us anymore. The truth is God is giving us lots of things to continue to be joyful about in these Advent days. And our job as we patiently wait for the birth of Jesus is to not lose joy, to continue to find it in lots of places and lots of ways. In fact, when we're done with this video and I'm done worshiping today, I'm going to take some time to focus on adding some beautiful color to these last pages of our Advent story. So that as we get to the birth of Jesus, I have just as many colors on this page as I do at the beginning. What things are you losing steam on? What things is it getting hard for you to feel grateful for in these last days of Advent. Could you find new joy in them this week? As we tick the days off of our Advent calendars, that's my prayer for you, that you will hear and see God and continue to find joy. Will you pray with me? Let's get in our prayer position. God, we are so thankful that you are everywhere and that if we look hard enough, we can see and feel and experience the Advent joy. As we continue to patiently wait, waiting can get hard for us, but the birth of your son is almost here. And that we know that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are filled with joy. Help us continue to be joyful as we make our way towards Christmas. In your name we pray, amen. Now as we come to our time of confession, we come realizing that at this point of the Advent season, sometimes we feel like our lives are more chaotic than they are committed. And we really have a hesitation of any hope of God's presence coming among us. Yet still we worship, 
We bring with us our chaos, our exhaustion, our sorrow, and our grief. But we also bring our joy. So held in that promise, let us join together in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Joyous God, creator of hope, peace, love, and joy, we confess our need for your strength and insight on our journey of life and faith. We feel the disappointment of not being able to gather and celebrate the season in this pandemic year. We feel the grief of loss, isolation, and illness. It is easy to slip under a gloomy cloud of despair. Yet you call us from darkness and hopelessness into light and joy. You remind us that you are seeking to do a new thing through even us. Forgive our hesitation and fear. Restore us to a childlike wonder and a Mary-like sense of obedience and joy as we make our silent confessions. Hear the good news. By God's love made known to us through the Christ child, you shall be led out in joy and brought back in peace as forgiven people. Held in that promise, I proclaim to you that we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. We enter into the Gospel of Luke this week, and we hear about Elizabeth and Mary and the angel Gabriel. Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist, and Mary is the mother of Jesus, and they are first cousins, and they are pregnant at the same time. Elizabeth is six months pregnant when Mary makes a long journey to visit her. Elizabeth is advanced in age and has been unable to have children up until this point. And Mary is young, and she has just been told by an angel that she will conceive a child, a son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's listen in on the conversation between the angel Gabriel and Mary. I'll be reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 26 to 38. And if you have your Bible with you, or if you have a Bible app on your electronic device, I would invite you to follow along. And the words will also be on the screen. Now with joy, listen to a word of God. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. 
The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative, Elizabeth, has conceived a son. This woman who was unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we open our hearts and minds to receive these words of Scripture and hear the proclaiming of your love, may we find ways to witness to your hope, your peace, your love, and your joy as we go out into a waiting and needy world, knowing that you go with us as our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The story we heard just now from the Gospel of Luke has become to known as the Annunciation, which means the announcement. The angel Gabriel announces to Mary that she is going to become pregnant. The definition of angel is a messenger from God. So the appearance of an angel mean that, means that God is up to something, that God is ready to do something big, is preparing for something big to happen. Mary's encounter with the angel Gabriel and her response is where we enter her story today. Here's Mary, a simple, young, pregnant girl, a peasant girl. She might have even been in her early teens. She's vulnerable, she's uneducated, she's poor, and she's powerless. And she is engaged to a man named Joseph. After the grand announcement by the angel, Mary has some basic questions. Like, how can this be? And you're putting me on. Given the situation, questions seem to be a natural response. I think this story, in this story, we really have to admire Mary. First, admire her for her ability to face an angel, and then to voice her questions. And finally, admire her for the trust that she has, to trust herself to the angel's words and to God's work. Mary would have been about the same age as our confirmation students, and she would have fit right into our confirmation class, in which we encourage one another to ask questions, to ask questions about our life and faith, because we tell our students that's how we grow in our faith. Mary's questioning also gives us permission to ask questions, to be less than certain, and to wonder why and how things happen and how things can be. I have often wondered with this story, how many other young girls, how many other young girls did the angel Gabriel visit before Mary, unaware that God was trying to get a message to them or get their attention? How many other young girls might have said, no thanks, or I don't think so, when the angel Gabriel appeared to deliver his message? Scripture doesn't tell us any of those details. Scripture doesn't tell us if Mary was the first and only one that the angel went to. We only know that Mary believed the angel, and she trusted God, and she said her yes to God. Mary's questions really go to the heart of our human struggle to understand God coming into the world as one of us, to be part of us, to be among us. The idea of God coming in human flesh and being present in our lives as one of us is really difficult for any of us to get our heads around. The mere thought of trusting God's presence from day to day can be frightening, especially for those of us who have control issues. Such reliance on God is really not orderly, nor is it logical in our day-to-day -day lives. But when we take time to reflect and look back at the ways that we have been provided for and the ways that we have made it through despite our anxieties and despite our uncertainties, 
it really does fill us with awe, and it fills us with gratitude. It is also comforting to know that Mary's questions did not disqualify her from God's work and purpose. Gabriel allows Mary to ask her questions. And as a representative of God, Gabriel stays with her in her questions without saying that her questions demonstrate a lack of faith or a lack of trust in God. Author Barbara Brown Taylor has written, God can God can and will invade our ordinary lives, getting, giving us our own chances to say yes to God's wild plans. Deciding to say yes does not mean that we are not afraid. It doesn't mean that we don't ask our questions. It just means that we are not willing to let our questions stop us. It means that we are not willing to let our fears hold us back. Mary's response to God's presence in her life really can be our response. Mary made a choice, a choice about believing and about being on God's journey. And she believed that God who chose her would be part of whatever was going to happen next. Mary makes a commitment and moves forward. And like many commitments and decisions that we make in life, she doesn't know what it all is going to entail. She doesn't know where it will all lead. But she moves forward, and she moves forward with this promise that the angel has given her, that she is loved by God, and that God is going to be with her, providing for her on every step of her journey. An angel, the angel Gabriel's announcement to Mary really is only the beginning. It's only the beginning of what would be a long journey for Mary and Joseph in their saying yes to God, and in their parenting Jesus. But in each step of the journey, whether it is Mary leaving home for several months to go be with her cousin Elizabeth, or Joseph considering bringing adultery charges against Mary, or the long journey to Bethlehem, or all the things that take place at the birth and after the birth, that God gives them everything they need in the moment that they need it, on their journey. The great mystery of Christmas that continues to give us comfort and continues to give us hope is that the God of love who gave us life is with us as Emmanuel, God with us at all times and in all places. During my undergraduate days in college, I lived in what we then called the dorms. It's now called student resident halls. But I can't remember exactly all the people that lived with us in the dorm, but one person does stand out, and that person's name was Betty. And Betty was one of those people that really bugged me, not to the point of dislike, but, you know, just irritating. She was irritating most of the time during finals week. At various times during the day or night during final exam week, I would be studying in the study lounge in the basement of the dormitory. And it seemed like every time I was in the study lounge studying, there was Betty, curled up, all cozy on one of the couches, sipping her hot cocoa and reading her Bible. By midweek, most of us in the study lounge looked pretty bad because we had very little sleep and we probably hadn't showered in a couple of days. But there was Betty, looking all fresh and rested. We'd say things to Betty like, so Betty, when are you going to start studying for your finals? Or, Betty, I know you're in my biology class and we have the comprehensive exam tomorrow. Are you going to start studying? Betty's response was always the same. She'd say, I'm not worried. God will provide. I think after I heard that five or six times during finals week, I finally asked Betty if she thought God was going to take her finals for her. I never knew how Betty did on her final exams, but I do remember that after the semester break, Betty did not return to school. Her academic grade point average was such that she was invited to leave the academic setting. Some of the people in the dorm kept in touch with Betty, and she came back one weekend for a visit. And she wasn't in school anywhere, she didn't have a job to speak of, and she was living here and there with family and friends. Other than that, Betty hadn't changed much. 
Someone asked her if she was scared, not knowing what she was going to do or where she was going to live or what kind of job she was going to get. And her response was the same that it had been during finals week that semester before. She said, God will provide. And then she added, I know that God is with me and will always provide enough. Now, I would never advise anyone to be like Betty when it came to approaching school or responsibilities the way that she did. But there was something, something that I admired about Betty and her belief and her trust that God would always be with her and that God would always provide enough. In the one whose birth we await at Christmas, we have a God who is with us, a God who is with us in celebration and in sorrow, around our Christmas trees, at our dinner tables, in our work and in our schooling, and in every place of anxiety and suffering and fear and disappointment and grief. Sometimes our carefully laid out plans are interrupted by life's twists and turns or by a pandemic. And there's all, but yet there's always enough. There's always enough provided for us for the journey. Enough when illness or surprise babies or aging parents or the economy change our direction. Enough when the healing seems like it's impossible and will last forever. Enough to make new what seems hopeless right now. Enough to restore and set right what is unjust and what is unfair. Enough to provide hope in our grief. Enough to forgive the past and meet the needs of the future. Enough when we are confused. Enough when we are uncertain. And enough when we are worried. The strength that is offered by God seems most often to be given to us in just small increments rather than this downpouring of blessings. It seems like we get the small increments of blessing along the way in our journey. Mary doesn't receive a lump sum payment for her saying yes to God. She receives enough for each day. Yet in between the blessings, in, the, in between the blessings of life, there are always the difficulties the difficult stretches of faith. For Mary, it was leaving her village before she started to show. It was sharing her news with her parents and with Joseph. It was the long walk to Bethlehem in her last trimester. It was fleeing to Egypt in the middle of the night to, in order to spare her baby's life. And on and on until Mary witnesses the death of her son on a cross. This story of Mary saying yes is a wonderful climax to our Advent season, a season in which we have been challenged, a season in which our unshakable faith and our deep certainty has often felt uncertain. But it's been in the small ways, it's been in the small trust, the small faith, and the small wonder of God coming among us that we realize that God is coming among us in the smallest of forms in this vulnerable baby that will be born. So what's the message in all of this for us? In the Annunciation, God asked to take on flesh and become real in Mary. And she said yes. And that is exactly what God asks of us, that we say our yes in these pandemic days, in these days of illness and pain and loss and injustice and isolation, it takes courage to say yes to God. And it takes courage to allow ourselves to let God be God. The same kind of courage it must have taken for Mary to agree to let herself be a vessel for God to become real in this world. Sometimes the most courageous and the most holy thing that we can do is to give up control and let God be God and allow God to show us what to do. As we move through this final week of Advent, the good news is that God is present with us. And we have been preparing. 
We have been preparing with gratitude for the hope, for the peace, for the love, and for the joy of God's wonderful promise to be seen in the birth of Jesus, Jesus the Christ child. May that same sense of hope, peace, love, and joy be born in us again, so that through us, the world will know of God's great love. May it be so for each of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. it is with a sense of gratitude and with joy for the blessings that we have in our lives that we come to our time of offering. And by joyfully sharing generously from the blessings of our lives, we do that as an act of worship, to make other things happen in this world to show God's love. And there are several different ways that you can make your offering. You can mail your offering to the church, or you can click the donate button, which is on the church website right near where you clicked into worship. Or if you're coming past the church, you can drop your offering in our church mailbox. Our pictures each week tell the story of what is happening in our ministry and what our offerings are going to support. And our pictures today is of our children's Christmas program. And it was pure joy to watch this Christmas program. And they did a wonderful job. It was done virtually, pandemic style. So our kids prepared, they practiced, and they did their parts at home. And then they were all edited together into one Christmas program. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, it is on our church website, and you can click into there and and watch that. And you'll be smiling for 17 minutes throughout this children's Christmas program. So thank you for the ways that your offerings continue to support our children's ministry. And now we also take time to offer our prayers. Each week we are praying in our church family. We are praying for people within our church family, and we have people who are sending prayer cards. 
And each week also we are praying for a different organization within our community and offering our gratitude for that organization. And this week we are praying for shelter from the storm here in Sun Prairie. And this is an organization that provides relief and rehabilitation and development for people through shelter and training and opportunities and relationships and mentoring and also support. So we thank the Shelter from the Storm for the ways that they are in ministry in our community. We've had several prayer requests come in this week that I want to be able to lift to you today. Marilyn Hahn had some outpatient surgery this last week, and so we pray our healing prayers for Marilyn. Kathy Thornton will be having upcoming heart procedure outpatient uh, at the end of the month, and so our prayers are with her. Barb Kohler's longtime friend Marlene, who we've been praying for off and on over the last month, did pass away this last week, and so Barb has asked for our prayers for Marlene's family as they are guided going forward. Terry and Pete Twiddell asked for our prayers for a close friend of theirs who has been diagnosed with cancer. Pat Harper's sister Jody has been diagnosed with COVID and she lives with their elderly mother, so our prayers for her recovery. Marsha Flaherty's dad also has been diagnosed with COVID and he's in a care center, but our, our prayers are with him that he can recover from that. Gary Einerson's close friend that goes all the way back to their school days, his name Dave, uh, died of COVID this past week in Madison. So our, our prayers are with Gary and with Dave's family. John Schneider is doing better after breaking his hip, and the hope for goal is for him to go back to his, uh, his room at New Perspective. So I, our prayers are with John and his recovery. And some other joys, uh, Don and Lenora Matthew are celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary coming up. And they also are celebrating the fact that they've been members of this church, the Sun Prairie United Methodist Church, for 49 years. So our joy is with Don and Lenore during these days. And also I'd like to just make a personal thank you to Lisa Wink, who's been on our staff for the last six years as our director of small groups and technology and many other things that she has done in ministry here at Sun Prairie United Methodist. And she's moving on to a new position, not far away, just down at our conference office with the United Methodist Church Conference. And she will be the director of communications there. But uh, we are praying for her, her good start there and that, uh, that her family still remains members of this congregation. So that is, that is a joy. But we wish Lisa well on her journey and this next step in her journey. Well, now I invite us to enter into a time of prayer as we bring ourselves into God's presence and bring ourselves before God. So let us begin with silent prayer as we come to God. Let us pray. God of great joy, remind us in this time of prayer and worship that you are the God of abundance. You are more strength, more courage, more wisdom, more trust, and more joy than we can imagine. And so we live as your grateful people. By your Holy Spirit, O oh God, help us to believe that nothing is beyond your ability. And as this Advent season draws to a close, give us a new sense of awe, as we prepare to celebrate the good news of Christ's birth. Loving God, help us to know that in the darkness of our living and that there is light, that your light yet shines. Help us to live more fully in the light of your presence so that fear and anxiety do not rule over us. We are thankful, God, that when we are at the edge of giving up hope for ourselves and for humanity, you once again come to us. And so we ask you that you would stir within us your power, within us to be like Mary, to say our yes, our yes to you and our yes to others as we allow ourselves to be vessels of your love. We are grateful, O oh God, that even from the struggles of our lives, you weave joy. You weave joy out of sadness until our lives become a tapestry of great beauty. So we pray this day and always, in the name of Emmanuel, God with us, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. As a response to our worship, we invite you to put your faith into action, and we have several ways for you and your family to do that. First, we encourage you to go to our church website at sunprairieumc.org, and there you can find many ways to get involved in the life of our church. As we move toward Christmas, there are many opportunities to worship next week online with Sun Prairie UMC. Monday, December 21st, we will offer the longest night service. Anytime after 7 p.m., go to the church website. This service is a quiet, meditative worship service that will offer the opportunity to remember the hurting places in your life and move toward healing. Our children's Christmas Eve service will be online through the church website anytime after 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve. This worship is intended for our children and young families. Our Christmas Eve worship service will be available anytime on Christmas Eve after 3 p.m. as well. And even though we cannot safely gather together this year for Christmas Eve, we have planned a beautiful worship service with music, the Christmas story read and proclaimed, the sacrament of Holy Communion, and the lighting of our candles during the singing of Silent Night at the end of the service. We will offer a brief Christmas Day meditation on the church website anytime after 7 a.m. on Christmas morning. The music and meditation will be based on the beautiful song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And you will want to be with us next weekend on the first weekend after Christmas. We will share worship led by our Wisconsin Bishop, Hisu Jung, and the Cabinet. Take the opportunity this Christmas to share worship with your family and friends across the miles or next door by inviting them to be a part of our worship at Sun Prairie UMC. And finally, if you don't already receive our weekly email newsletter or our Monday Word of the Week devotional, please contact the church office and we will get you subscribed to both of those emails. And lastly, I'd like to take a moment to thank you all for the wonderful support and encouragement that you have given to me, especially over the last nine months in taking on new roles with our worship online. This is officially my last weekend here as a staff member at Sun Prairie UMC. I'll be moving over to the conference office as the Director of Communications, but I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. I couldn't do any of this without your support, and I wouldn't be moving into this new role without your love and encouragement. So thank you very much. Now in these continued days leading to Christmas, we are reminded that our true joy and peace comes in sharing what we have received. As we worship and as we know the promise of Christmas, we share the gift of Emmanuel, God with us. May we continue to share that gift as we share the love of God who created us, the grace of Christ who redeems us, and the strength of the Holy Spirit who sustains us. May we have the courage this day to live as God's grateful people. Amen.